Right. Right. Thanks. So, hello everybody. Today we want to talk about the project we've been working on in ProfitBricks. So ProfitBricks is the cloud provider. Our network infrastructure is built on InfiniBand, and as our customers want to have Ethernet networks within their virtual data centers, we need a way to provide Ethernet over InfiniBand, hence the name of the project. Of course, this name may sound familiar to some of you. Indeed, there is a project with the same name, also known as MLX4 Vinic, developed by Mellanox. However, this project uh, requires specialized hardware, uh, BridgeX Gateway, which implements a lot of functionality. Also, at the moment, this project is discontinued, so that wasn't really an option for us. Another possible approach would be to use some encapsulation protocol like VXLAN or Geneve on top of IPOIB. But this approach also has some drawbacks. Uh, we've been experiencing some stability issues with IPOIB in our data centers. Uh, there is a performance trade-off in connected mode. It doesn't scale well, and in UD mode, the single-threaded performance is not that good. And overall, our impression was that this high number of encapsulation layers uh, brings too much complexity and makes system less reliable, le makes it slower and harder to manage. That's why we decided to go for a solution that allows us to provide Ethernet right on top of InfiniBand. Our main focus points were scalability and where theoretically we are able to create up to half a billion of uh, virtual networks for one InfiniBand subnet. Uh, we also focus on performance, uh, and we support uh, hardware of loads, such as checksum and segmentation of loads on MLX4 driver. We also focused on ease of management, so from system administrator perspective, uh, it looks and behaves just like a normal Ethernet network interface, supporting all standard tools like IP tool, F tool, bridging, VLANs, and so on. Of course, that's a pure software implementation, so we do not require any specialized hardware for that. Uh, we share some common points with the concept of EOIB that was presented here five years ago, also by Mellanox. And uh, as we know, uh, Intel recently has developed an Omnipath VNIC driver, and we see our solution as a, some kind of a counterpart for InfiniBand. So let's have a, some high-level overview. That's an example with uh, three hosts and three virtual networks. One virtual network connects all three hosts, and two others connect only two hosts. Each network is defined on InfiniBand level by the partition key and multicast LAD. So each host that is connected to the particular network or broadcast domain has a virtual Ethernet switch instance on it. Virtual Ethernet switch does not uh, perform any communication on its own. It just provides needed services for virtual ports such services as multicast group, sub group subscription and uh, packet forwarding. So VES can have any number of virtual ports, and virtual, ports, uh, virtual port is the entity that performs actual communication, so it contains a QP or QP group. And obviously only the virtual ports that belong to the same broadcast domain can communicate with each other. So before we, before we move on to the implementation details, let us reiterate on the main concepts. So our driver provides uh, overlay Ethernet networks on top of InfiniBand UD transport. Uh, each overlay network is identified by the P key and M lead. Uh, host connected to the particular network has a VES instance on it. 
This contains the forwarding database that maps MAC address to the remote virtual port. And the virtual port is the entity performing actual communication identified by the QP number and it provides an API to the net device level. So on this slide, uh, this slide illustrates one of the main features of our implementation that provides us scalability. So we use mlead overloading, which means that uh, multiple mgits with different pkeys share the same mlead. That became uh, yeah, totally valid since uh, IBTA specification version 1.3. So here we can see that uh, VS A and VS B have the same mlead, but the mgit and the pkey differs. So vport1 and vport3 cannot communicate, uh, sorry, vport1 and vport2 cannot communicate to vport3. Uh, a subnet manager doesn't support that. We use some generic pkey to subscribe to the multicast group. However, on the later stage, on the vport initialization, we already attached to the pkey and mgit unique for this particular broadcast domain. So let's now talk about how Ethernet frames <coughs> get actually sent over in infinite band. UIB sends Ethernet frames directly as infinite band payload, prepending them with a four byte header. So the four byte header has a format similar to the one used by MLX for VNIC. So meaning that the uh, version and signature fields are set to some specific values to make HCA treat the payload as Ethernet frame. This is primarily needed to make uh, a rig side hardware flows work, for example, checksum validation in a rigs. Apart from this, this header is used to support TSS for HCA older than ConnectX4. So going forward, this slide describes how the destination is selected for the InfiniBand frames. Uh, so this actually works as a self-learning switch. So it contains a forwarding database, so-called FDB, that holds the mapping between Ethernet, MAC, and VLAN ID, if present, and InfiniBand, PK, and MLEAD. Sorry, uh, QPN and MLEAD. So uh, the way it works is that it learns on incoming traffic. Uh, so for each incoming frame, the Ethernet source MAC address and VLAN ID of Ethernet payload, as well as source QPN uh, and uh, lead of InfiniBand, of containing InfiniBand frame, are extracted, and the mapping between Ethernet data and InfiniBand data are stored in the FDB. On TX path, in its turn, the FDB is examined to find the destination lead and QPN based on the destination MAC address and VLAN ID of the Ethernet frame getting sent. If the mapping is found, then the frame gets sent as InfiniBand unicast, otherwise it gets sent as InfiniBand multicast. So, and to better illustrate the above concept, here you can see a simple ping diagram showing how ping between two hosts connected to one EYB network works. So in the diagram above, uh, the first host uh, starting to ping doesn't have IP to MAC mapping in its ARP cache, so it issues, it broadcasts ARP who has request, which gets sent as InfiniBand unit multicast. So as uh, the second host receives this frame, it extracts source Ethernet address and VLAN ID if present and uh, QPN and lead, source QPN and lead, and uh, performs FDB learning. Then when the second host performs ARP response, it extracts, it examines FDB and extracts the destination uh, QPN and lead from the destination MAC address and VLAN ID of the ARP reply 
and use those to send this ARP reply as InfiniBand unicast. So as this frame gets received by the first host, it performs uh, learning similar to what the second, host, uh, the second host did, and so all subsequent ping requests and replies go send over InfiniBand unicast using these FDB stored mappings. So and to complete the picture below, there is another small diagram that shows how ping goes when the destination MAC address, the mapping for the destination MAC address is not present in the host FDB. In this case, the ping gets sent as InfiniBand multicast, and as soon as the uh, reply comes from the, first, the second host, the first host performs FDB learning, and all subsequent ping requests go sent over InfiniBand unicast. So here you can see a list of hardware flaws that we support. So hardware flaws are, of course, hardware specific, and we support them now only for MLX4, primarily because this is the main hardware used in our clusters. Uh, yeah, but we are planning to add support for MLX5 pretty soon. So as you can see, we support TX and receive uh, checksum calculation and validation. We support large send of load. We support transmit and receive site scaling. And so since UIB is present as a standard uh, net device in Linux system, any standard network configuration tools can be used with it. Apart from that, we've implemented uh, an extension library to IP link tool, as well as a corresponding Netlink interface in the driver that allow creation, destroyal of UIB devices with the standard IP link add and Dell commands. So here you can see a very simple example of creation and destroyal of IP of UIB uh, device named UIB0. Uh, yeah, but apart from that, it's, it's possible to specify lots of other settings with the uh, IP link add on UIB device creation. So this includes standard settings like MAC address and number of uh, ticks and RIG queues, as well as UIB specific settings like uh, IB device name and port number, FDB size, uh, QK, IB rate, and so on. Apart from that, UIB also implements as tool support. So apart from standard offloading control, one can also, for example, use S2 minus S to get per Q, Eric and TX statistics. Yeah, and so here you can see some benchmarking results that we did for EYB and their comparison with VXLAN over IPYB in UD and connected mode. So we used this Intel Xeon, two Intel Xeon hosts with Connectix 3 cards uh, running in FDR10 mode, running uh, Linux 4.4 kernel with uh, Mellanox of F3.4 uh, uh, package. So unfortunately, we didn't have any newer hardware by then, but I think the numbers are still quite representative. So as you can see, uh, uh, IPYB in connected mode scaled not so good for multi-threaded setups, while IPYB in UD mode showed not so well performance in single threaded test payloads. UIB took the best of those two. Uh, so I would also add that we didn't do any performance optimization or tuning so far, so I would guess that these numbers may not be final and could be even improved for UIB. UIB also showed uh, better, I mean, less CPU utilization. So here we took a test case when uh, UIB and VXLAN over IPUIB and UD mode showed similar bandwidth performance with uh, InfiniBand path through being a bottleneck and compared CPU utilization for those cases. So as you can see, UIB is more than 30% better in CPU utilization than VXLAN or IPUIB. Uh, yeah, there are of course still some things to get improved for UIB. So first we are planning to add support for MLX5. Um, we're also planning to open source UIB and open 
and offer it to the upstream Linux kernel. And we're also planning to work on performance optimizations and tuning. So there are also some things that can be improved, but that we are not planning to work on so far. This includes path speed discovery and support of multiple InfiniBand subnets, for example. So if you're working on a similar project or willing to collaborate, please let us know. We'll be happy to cooperate. So basically that's it. Thank you very much Thank for you. listening. So it's around half a billion. Uh, you mean virtual networks or? InfiniBand subnets. Ah, so we support only a single InfiniBand subnet. We don't support multiple subnets. We don't do routing. Oh, routing. Yeah. routing we don't do, okay. right. Yeah. But uh, just, uh, there could be multiple subnets with a node attached to just not routing. Yeah, exactly. We just yeah. don't have this uh, particular case in our cloud. That's why we are we're not, I mean, in our data centers, that's why we're not, we have not implemented it, although it's of course possible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.